it's the most amazing thing that the Olympic Games are the only type of mega bro project to always exceed their, their budget. So for other types, uh, you know, like uh, high-speed rail or uh, large bridges or the tallest buildings in the world, there are always a few that come in on or below budget. But for the Olympics, no, we haven't been able to find even one. So that is extraordinary. And we think it's because, uh, um, you know, they always have to be on time. There's no way you can move the opening date. So with other projects, you can change uh, around between schedule and, and, uh, and budget, but you can't do that for the Olympics. So all you can do when problems uh, begin, and problems always begin on projects of this size, is to throw more money at the, at the project. And that's what you do at the Olympics. Uh, so that's one thing. Another thing is that you're always doing the Olympics in a new place. You always, uh, you always give it to an organization that haven't tried it before, to a place that haven't tried it before. And that's actually not a very good idea if you want to be on budget. You wanted to give it to somebody who's experienced, who's tried it before and so on, but you don't do that for the Olympics. So we call that the eternal beginner syndrome. So people who are doing the Olympics are always beginners, and that's not a good idea if you're doing a mega project, which is difficult enough in the first place, and then you give it to a beginner and you, 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 uh, you get the problems that we see and uh, results in cost overruns. Another uh, spectacular thing about the uh, Olympics is that uh, about half the projects uh, uh, go over budget by more than 100%. That's more than a doubling in real terms, not including any inflation. So these are, 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 are real dollars that we are talking about. Uh, so that's a huge amount, and again, that is more than other uh, mega projects. Uh, what you could do about this is uh, you could try to be uh, more rigorous in your cost control. And to be fair, the IOC and, and host have started doing that, but it's, it's very difficult given the way the Olympics are set up, the way the cities bid for them and win them, and the fact that cities haven't tried to do the Olympics before. Uh, it, it's actually difficult. So we can see that even though people try to bring down the cost, it's, it's very difficult. But there is some progress in that area, uh, but not nearly as much as for other types of, of mega products. So the answer is it's just very difficult to bring down the cost because of the way the Olympics are set up. So an early thing that the IOC did uh, that is so long ago that we can actually test it now statistically is something that they call the, the Knowledge Management Program. Um, and this is something that started with the Olympics in Sydney in 2000 and uh, that has been applied to the Olympics ever since. And basically uh, the idea is uh, that you would, uh, in, in new Olympics, you'd learn from previous Olympics. It seems like a pretty obvious thing, but it, it only started uh, around 2000 because there were some very large cost overruns uh, uh, earlier, and the IOC and others saw that we, we should do something about that. So they, they did this uh, knowledge management program, and we tested this, and it actually works. So this is a success story for the Olympics. However, uh, it brought down cost overruns for an astronomical level of about 150% uh, to a high level of 50, about 50%. Uh, that is a very significant reduction but a 50% cost overrun on billion dollar projects is still a huge cost overrun. So there's a long way to go yet until we are in a place where we would say things are uh, satisfactory. So we've found that the figures that uh, the host nations and the IOC report are often unreliable. If you dig deep enough, uh, sometimes you can find the real figures, and that's what we're doing. Sometimes you can't. There are actually examples of hosts who have burned the documentation in order not to, uh, uh, not to be caught out, you know, on what the costs were. So there are examples of that. That's just a, an extreme illustration of, of the, the lengths that, that organizers would go to to cover up uh, costs and cost overrun. So given those conditions, you just cannot trust uh, host cities and nations and the IOC. You need to do independent studies. An example was London in 2012, where the government uh, came out and said we actually delivered the Olympics uh, under budget. And we, we uh, tested that claim, and it turns out that the overrun is actually 76%. Uh, the government just chose a late, convenient baseline. And, you, and that's the oldest trick in the book. You know, If you do that, you can make any budget look like you came in under budget or on budgets. 